Hey everyone, it's Ted here. I wanted to go over uh, engine couplers and engine alignment today a little bit about stern drive. It's an area that uh, we technicians, stern drive technicians, work on often. Um, if you have a spun hub, as we call it, which is the engine coupler side, or on a rubber propeller, uh, the propulsion of the propeller just slows way down uh, and you can't make any you know, headway. If you have a spun hub on a engine coupler, it could be due to wear and tear, or it could be just because the engine's out of alignment. So I wanted to go over that today and show you engine alignment, uh, how that process works, and then also what couplers in here look like. So let's get started. Okay, on the back side of the engine, this is the flywheel housing. And what we have is we have two rear motor mounts here, one on one side, one on the other. And they're a rubber mount that's mounted, bolted to the inner transom assembly, and then a stud comes up through here, and there's a piece of rubber between this bolt and this housing, so on both sides. These are fixed, both these mounts are fixed, so they're not adjustable. In a Merc Cruiser, it's a little different. I think I've got a video out there of actually what it looks like. Uh, with the spacer, there's a large double uh, round, looks like a double lock washer. With this Volvo one, it's much more simple. There's a washer on the bottom, there's the stud, there's the washer on the top and a lock nut. So, when the engine's installed, it's just bolted in place in the back. Now, the adjustments are only in the front, so we'll look at the front motor mounts. All right, the front motor mounts are gonna be attached to the stringers in the boat somehow, fasten whether they're bolted through or lag bolted through. And then this is the rubber portion of the motor mount that absorbs the shock that suspends the upper part of the motor mount on the engine through this stud. And you can adjust it. There's a nut on the bottom and a nut on the top. Now, both of these, if I loosen the top nut and then I rotate the lower nut counterclockwise, that's going to raise the engine up. If I turn the nut clockwise down the stud that I'm going to lower the engine. So when we do engine alignment, we do it on both sides equally. So we want to keep the distance between this motor mount and this top of the stringer the same distance on this side, the port side, as we do the starboard side. And what that does is that raises or lowers the engine, which changes the position of the engine coupler to the actual transom assembly and the gimbal bearing. So adjustments need to be done on both of these. There is a torque spec in the book for these nuts, so make sure that you look that up uh, and torque each side equally so that when you're all done with your adjustments that this nut does not back off. I've seen people actually do this, fail to tighten that nut up securely, have the nut back off, and then have this motor mount lower bolt slowly vibrate down to the bottom. So now the engine is actually cockeyed and it's facing down on this side, which throws the coupler out of alignment with the transom assembly. That's where the failure occurs. So here is an 8.1 and this is a uh, engine coupler. The inner portion is what receives the stern drive shaft. And then there's this rubber, whole rubber hub that is basically glued to the inner hub and then it's glued to the outer hub. And this acts like a big rubber shock absorber. So while the engine starts, when you start the engine up, the flywheel rotates. This is bolted to the flywheel. So when you start the engine up, this is rotating, which is rotating the input shaft of the, of the drive system, which is a stern drive. When you put the drive in gear, obviously the drive doesn't want to turn, so it has to have this rubber absorb that shock of shifting in gear. In an inboard application, it's similar, but what they typically use, it's either rubber or, with this style, this is a drive coupler that's bolted to the flywheel of the engine, and then this is where the transmission shaft goes into. And then this plate is riveted through this plate, and there's springs that separate this plate from this plate, so it's suspended there. And what happens is over time, when you shift it, this absorbs every time you shift it into gear that shock of the propeller shaft being engaged to the engine and this can wear these springs can wear then what happens is the inside it gets worn and these springs start to chuck around in here they get a little play so at idle in an inboard engine it makes a chatter noise at dead idle in neutral 
When you shift it into gear, the noise goes away because you've got it in gear. So if you have an inboard engine that has a very weird um, clicking sound in the back of the engine when you're in neutral at idle, and then it goes away as soon as you put it in gear, it's probably this drive plate's bad. So a drive plate in an inboard engine versus a drive coupler in a stern drive boat. So this coupler is what receives the input shaft. So here is, here is the input yoke shaft and that goes into the coupler like this. So what's in the transom assembly, this shaft, when you put the drive on, is a very large bearing. It's called the gimbal bearing and it rides right about here on the shaft and that supports it. Now that bearing is obviously you can move it, you can only rotate it around, but it's fixed. It's actually pressed into the transom assembly. So it can't move up, it can't move down, it can't move left, it can't move right. It can be turned though slightly. It has like a ball and socket kind of a way that it works. And of course it can spin. So that means when you install the drive, the drive is bolted to the outside transom assembly. This is fixed in position. It can't move up or down, it can't physically do this and it can't do this. So when you install it into the coupler, then it needs to be aligned. And that means that this shaft, right, has to line up exactly with these splines so that it'll go into the coupler nice and smooth. The engine, on the other hand, is the alignment point. So if the engine alignment is not correct, let's say the front of the engine's down, then the coupler at an extreme looks like this. That's not going to fit, correct? So, if we do get the engine pretty close to alignment, then you should be able to slide the drive on with ease. When you install the drive, it should just slide onto the transom assembly and onto the studs and you should be able to bolt it up. If the coupler is not aligned, the engine's not aligned ever so slightly, and I'll just hold this a little bit up, then what's going to happen is I have to force the drive on. And when I force the drive on, that puts stress on this coupler, on this piece into that rubber. So it can absorb just a little bit of that. If it's out of alignment by very much, you cannot get the drive on. There's no way to get it on. Now, if you had an engine motor mount failure, all right, like the one I talked about earlier, then that means the engine would be down on the front on this side. So that would actually twist and put this out. Now, if the drive was on and the motor falls down like this, trying to get the drive off is really, really hard to do. Now you've got to force the drive off. Lastly, um, you know, the idea of aligning the engine is something that really a dealer needs to do. Uh, you need a drive alignment tool to do this, to align the engine. You have to have some experience to do it to make sure it works and you line it up and then you torque all the motor mounts back. Um, I have some other couplers here I'm gonna show you. So this is a good one. You can see that the rubber's nice and smooth all the way around. And then I have one that is a spun coupler. So this is one I took off of 454 years ago and you can see that actually the rubber has completely separated from the inner hub and that spun out inside here, All right? And that just is basically from old age. That's what happened to this one. So in this boat, they just basically couldn't go anywhere because this piece is spinning inside the rubber. So that's the extreme case if that happens. Now, if the engine is severely out of alignment, in other words, the motor mount fails, uh, it collapses or it loosens up and it falls down, then you can have a catastrophic failure of the coupler. And I'll show you one of those. So same kind of coupler, bolted on. This came off of a 7.4 as well, but this was a catastrophic failure due to severe engine misalignment. And as you can see, that's what happens. It physically tore this piece right out because the engine was so far out of alignment that the engine uh, motor mount had failed. And then what happens is this is turned at such a hard you know, point that it keeps turning like this and it just tears the rubber out. So that is a catastrophic failure in this one. So 
if you have a spun hub, you lose, you know, or you, you lose forward momentum. And one way to check it is if you find that you have a spun hub like this one here. So if you have one like this, then what you can do is just take the boat out of the water, obviously, because you can't go anywhere. It's got to get hauled out. And while it's uh, sitting on the trailer or sitting on the travel of sl slings or whatever, you shift the drive mechanically into gear. And then what you're going to do is you're going to step on the propeller and you're going to try to rotate the propeller shaft. Now it has to be in the direction where the drive is locked into gear. So if you have a shifting sliding clutch like on an alpha drive um, or a cobra drive, something like that, then you have to turn the, the drive, the propeller shaft counterclockwise when it's in forward gear and then put your body weight on it. If you can turn the propeller, either the hub on the propeller spun or this is spun or it's the inside of the drive is gone. But that's one way we check it real quick, just it's a quick check to see if this hub is spun. Mirror and a flashlight, get down in there, get a mirror and a flashlight, look in there, and that's how you can see if this is spun, especially from the side view like that. Okay, so that's the video for today, going over engine couplers and the importance of engine alignment. Um, every single time I take a stern drive off and I go to put it back on, I always put an alignment tool through the transom assembly and check the engine alignment. If it's not correct, then I'll go inside the boat and I'll make the adjustment so that the drive coupler is perfectly aligned with the gimbal bearing. That's what the alignment tool does. So you can buy an alignment tool. Um, they're not super expensive, but it's something that is a tool that we use as technicians with stern drives all the time. As a private boat owner, it really, do you need to buy one? Probably not. You should have a dealer check it. Uh, take the drive off, put the drive on, check engine alignment, and they can do that very, very quickly. So certified shops, they should have drive alignment tools for Mercury products, Merc Cruisers, and for Volvo stern drives. So if you like the video, hey, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.